心茶，唔会，点解啊？ Before Bruce Lee was named by Time Magazine as one of the 100 most influential people of the 20th century. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Before Bruce Lee would pave the way for other action stars like Jackie Chan and would dominate Hollywood television and films, appearing in The Green Hornet, Fist of Fury, and Enter the Dragon. Before Bruce Lee's character would be revived and reimagined in Quentin Tarantino's latest pick, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. We get into a fight, I accidentally kill you, I go to jail. Anybody accidentally kills anybody in a fight, they go to jail. It's called manslaughter. Before Bruce Lee would die under mysterious circumstances at the age of just 32, which has spawned decades of conspiracy theories. Now there's a reason nearly 50 years after his passing that people are still talking about the late and great Bruce Lee. Now this man, he was known for making martial arts mainstream and bridging the gap between East and West cinema. Now without Bruce Lee, there would likely be no Chuck Norris, no Jean-Claude Van Damme, no Steven Seagal or Jackie Chan. Even your favorite UFC fighters of today, they've grown up studying his methods and teachings. Now, by the time he was 18, he had appeared in 20 films, becoming a child star in Asian cinema. But it was his mixed ethnicity that got him to a lot of street fights, and when the cops and gangs were starting to pay him visits, well, Bruce, he was sent off to America. There, he was just this crazy mixed martial artist dude doing two finger push-ups and one inch punches. But soon, uh, Hollywood, well, they'd have to take notice of his unique abilities and his global appeal. What's going on guys, it's your boy Michael McCredden coming at you with another Before They Are Gone video, this one on Bruce Lee. Now this video has been requested for me to make on this channel for nearly five years. Now just last night I saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and I thought that was a good enough reason as any to get this video done. Now we have in the past made videos on the likes of Charles Manson, but we could make one on Sharon Tate or any celebrities from the swinging 60s. Now of course this channel it works off requests, so be sure to hit me up in the comments down below or via Instagram. All right, let's get into this video. Bruce Lee was born Li Jun Fan on November 27, 1940 in the Chinatown district of San Francisco, California. Now he just so happened to be born on both the hour and the year of the dragon, which according to tradition, well, it's an extremely good omen. Now many historians, they've attempted to lock down Bruce Lee's full family tree, and although most reports have led them with mixed results, well the general consensus is that he is at least a quarter European and perhaps a small part Jewish. No wonder he made it so big in show business. I'm kidding, it was a joke. Now the fourth of five children, he was given the name Bruce from a nurse at his birthing hospital, but his family, they never used the name during his preschool years. Now they wouldn't need to because at three months old, well his family, they would return to live in downtown Hong Kong. Their address was actually 218 Nathan Road in Kowloon. Now today, this is the city center. Now his father, Li Hoi Chun, he was a famous opera singer who transitioned into film as an actor. Now this opened the doors for the most charismatic and camera eager of his kids, young Bruce, who landed himself a few roles starting as young as three years old. By the age of 10, well, he was co-starring alongside his father in a film titled The Kid. <laughs> Much like the character he played in this film, well, young Bruce Lee, well, he was rolling around with the wrong crowd. Although Bruce was from an affluent family living a privileged lifestyle, well, the streets were rough and tough and filled with refugees. Now, young Bruce, he was involved in several street fights, so his parents, they decided to sign him up to be trained in martial arts. This was back when he was 16. Now, that same year, he was also dropped by his local school for poor grades. So the kid, well, he needed some new direction. He was taught Wing Chun by teacher Yip Man, but when his fellow classmates discovered that Bruce was of mixed ancestry, well, they refused to train with him. Now, this only led to him developing his skills faster as he got more one-on-one -on -one training with his teachers. On the side, he also took up boxing and he won a school tournament at St. Francis Xavier College after knocking out the previous champion in the finals. He also trained in Wu Tai Chi Chun, also known as NGGA, 
I don't wanna mess things up. And Jing Mo Tam Tai. And he did that for 12 sets. Okay, who am I kidding? I messed all those up. Try my best. Despite all the success in organized sports, will Bruce Lee continue to get into street brawls? And there was another boy whose parents had ties to organized crime. And uh, well, the police, they began showing up at his door. And his parents, well, they feared for his safety, they feared for his future, so they decided to send him back to America. I mean, he was born there, but you know. Eh, it worked out. He arrived in San Francisco at the age of 18 and relocated to Seattle within a year. Now he continued his high school education and he also worked as a waiter, which isn't a great situation for a kid who was a movie star back home. He also began teaching his own style of martial arts to the locals, which he called Bruce Lee's Kung Fu. Well, Kung Fu is originated in China. It is the ancestor of karate and Jiu Jitsu. It's more of a complete system and it's more fluid. By that I mean it's more flowing. There is continuity in movement instead of uh, one movement, two movement, and then stop. After graduating high school, he went to college, enrolled at Washington State University, studying the dramatic arts. Also philosophy, psychology, amongst other subjects. Now it was there that he met his future wife, Linda Emery, and the couple soon had two children. Bruce, he began to immerse himself in many American health and lifestyle practices that today have become common. But back in the 60s, well this stuff was the stuff of the future. He cut out all junk food and carbs, and he only ate healthy foods, high protein drinks, and vitamins and mineral supplements. He also got into bodybuilding and strength training, but only so far that it wouldn't limit his speed or flexibility. Now his extracurricular activities like running his own martial arts studio and getting involved with the Long Beach International Karate Championships, well they led him to dropping out of university and opening a second studio in Oakland, California. He developed more moves that made him a legend amongst the martial arts community, like the unstoppable punch. His growing reputation opened the doors for opportunities in Hollywood. He was cast in the role of Kato alongside Van Williams in the TV series titled The Green Hornet, and he even did some crossover episodes appearing in Batman. <laughs> It's a good thing those guys are on our side, even though they don't know it. It's a good thing those guys aren't in town every week. The next few years, he would land guest roles on shows like Ironside, Here Comes the Bride, and Blondie. Now, he also landed the role of choreographer for scenes on The Wrecking Crew, and this starred Dean Martin, Sharon Tate, and Chuck Norris. Now, when Sharon Tate was murdered by the Manson family, well, her husband, Roman Polanski, he initially suspected Bruce Lee for all these heinous crimes. It's a little awkward, I hope they clean that up. Now, show business can be a fickle place, and soon Bruce was out of bookings. Now, he went back to his bread and butter, which was his martial arts schools, and he began to develop practices including Jeet Kune Do, or the way of the intercepted fists. And this was a less rigid way and offered more practicality, flexibility, speed, and efficiency that could be used more for street fighting and look better on camera. If you try to remember, you will lose. Empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. In the 70s, Bruce, he returned to Hong Kong, and to his surprise, well, the Green Hornet had become a massive success back home. Now, he was quickly signed on to make two feature films, The Big Boss and Fists of Fury, which both broke box office records. For his third film, Way of the Dragon, he was given complete creative control, including writing, directing, starring, and choreographing all the fight scenes. Now his final fight scene opposite Chuck Norris. Now this was placed at the Colosseum in Rome and it's thought to be the most legendary fight scene he ever filmed. His next project was in collaboration with his Hong Kong movie studio, his own production company, and the big boys at Warner Bros. This was titled Enter the Dragon. Now only a few months after the completion of Enter the Dragon and six days before the release, well Bruce Lee, he passed away. He had been suffering from headaches and previously had a seizure. Now he was also taking painkillers due to a back injury. Now he went to bed on July 20th, 1973 and he just never woke up. Now doctors believe he had an allergic reaction to the painkiller ingredient known as equigesic. 
From there, his death, it was ruled as a misadventure. Now enter the dragon, it would go on to become one of the year's highest grossing films and cement Bruce Lee as a martial arts legend. Now he was survived by his wife, Linda Emery, and his children, Brandon and Shannon. Now his son, Brandon Lee, he died in 1993 on set while filming the film, The Crow. But uh, yeah, that's a, that's a whole other story. As for the rest of the story, well, it lives on through his legacy, his teachings, and the massive cultural impact he had on the world. My name, of course, is Michael McCrudden, and this is Before They Were Gone. I apologize it's taken us so long to make this Bruce Lee video. Uh, I, like when I first started this channel, this was a very popular request. So I guess I was at the movies last night and I'm like, man, I never made this one. So here we are finally getting it done. Um, we look forward to reading your positive comments in the, in the, in the, you know, where down below. Let me know your favorite Bruce Lee movie or Bruce Lee moment. And uh, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye.